Now the front air dam mould has been put back on the car to provide this flange. I'm just doing the final blending work before I mould the rest of this flip up front end. I've got to use weak Gyprock joint filler here rather than fairing compound because I don't want to permanently glue the bonnet down and not be able to lift it up to remove it off the car after this mould is made. I've been reading my rules again and it says the bonnet may be replaced and incorporated into a one piece panel but there shall be a definition line a minimum of 3mm wide defining the guard to bonnet join to maintain the external appearance of the original car. What they're talking about is this line right here. So rather than eliminate this gap completely between the side of my bonnet and the front guards, I'm just going to put some clay in there which will seal it for moulding but leave it still visible as required by my race rules. An overlapping flange is needed here on the inside to avoid having a gap between these two panels where the flip up front hinges and comes down.
Two of the most common misconceptions when it comes to making fiberglass moulds of car panels is one, that they have to be mega thick and rigid or have a, a huge, uh, very substantial timber frame attached to them. That's not the case. You've seen how little reinforcing I've had to put on this. The second uh, myth, if you like, is that when you're making a flange mould, that you have to put locator marks in it so that the two halves will line up exactly. Now, these uh, two halves of this, of this front clip mould would line up pretty well anyway because of the varied shape of it. The imperfections in the lip is what will uh, cause it to want to come together only to one place. But all you've got to do, you don't need locator pins or anything like that, all you've got to do is before you take the pieces off the die is just drill your holes for your bolts that will hold them together and that way everything will line up perfectly. That's all you need to do.